Hello everybody, I'm a businessman and this is my briefcase. Oh wait, no it's not, it's the brand new Aorus RTX 4080 laptop. That was close. This particular model is the Aorus 17H and it is a pretty exciting time for gaming laptops at the moment because of course we've just had the latest GPUs from Nvidia and this not only means you've got new features but obviously way more performance as well, more power efficiency and suddenly laptops don't have to be massive, they can be a whole lot smaller, sleeker, faster, 360 hertz displays for instance, yet they can actually be relatively attainable and in this very thin and light chassis that is actually portable. Now that's grabbed my attention. A massive thank you to Gigabyte for actually reaching out and sponsoring this video, by the way. Inside the box, you can see you do get the laptop itself. And then in terms of your accessories, you of course get your power brick and your regional power plug. This one provides 280 watts. 280 watts this is rated for. That's not to say this is going to use that all of the time. Obviously it's not. But fundamentally you do need to pay very close attention to the wattages of the things like the graphics card. This 4080 uses a max of 150 watts on this laptop but depending on the one that you buy it actually might not be as much of that and then in terms you might get less performance. But you can see that this is actually a very well crafted machine isn't it? Bearing in mind this is a gaming laptop I absolutely love the fact that the branding is fairly minimal. You've got the ARS logo on the back this looks as if it's going to light up but otherwise you could sort of use this anywhere and everywhere and it would fit right in especially if you're going to want to do any sort of like creative work on the side which is also why you want that graphics card then I guess the sort of boundary really between like the Nvidia Studio laptops and the Nvidia gaming ones are actually starting to become a little bit blurred which I think is a really cool thing. But let's place this under the overhead so you can actually see what we've got going on. Trackpad is a nice size will be good for gestures. Full size keyboard with a number pad as well again great for work. We've got some ventilation up here at the top obviously out of the back as well and then the sides it's nice to see that we finally have hdmi 2.1 as well which is fantastic to see so if you want to hook this up to i don't know your like oled tv that runs at 120 hertz something like that then you can do that at 4k resolution especially if you're playing like some more classic titles you'll probably be able to reach that as well which is pretty cool otherwise we've got a mini display port usb 3 ethernet around the other side you've got yet more usb c full size usb power and then your headphone microphone combo jack Turning to the back of the laptop, we've got plenty of ventilation here, which is going to be important for such a high powered machine. This looks to be a TR6 screw if you're interested. Do be aware of the warranty stickers on the bottom though, because if you do decide to open this up and you damage anything, then this won't be covered by the Gigabyte warranty. That is actually two years for this. It's quite impressive. I think most are only a single. Once you've taken all of the screws out, it should just pop off to reveal the rest of the laptop. So obviously we have our processor and GPU cooling here. Underneath these little strips are our RAM that is user replaceable if you want to swap this out for any reason, maybe upgrade it. In this model, there is one PCI Gen 4 SSD fitted as standard, but you can fit another in this slot here if, again, you want to upgrade or just add extra storage a little bit later. But otherwise, everything is pretty much where you'd expect it. So the only other thing to note is that this has a 99 watt hour battery, which is the largest you can actually put inside a laptop and still be allowed to take it on a plane. Oh, this is the bit where I've got to put it all back now, isn't it? I mean, it is easy enough, it's just... I'm lazy. But let's get to the good bit, shall we? And actually turn this on and see how it performs. And I'll tell you what, the bezels on this are ridiculously thin. Normally, well, we've, you know, we've seen thin bezels on the sides before, but you've actually got a thin one down the bottom as well. The chin on this is nowhere near as big as on most other laptops. That is a 2023 development right there. We do also have face unlock, so when I look at it, it logs in. Here's our fancy illuminated keyboard look. In terms of the specifications of this machine, this is rocking a 13th generation i7-13700H, though an i9 is available as an upgrade. 16 gigabytes of DDR5 memory running at 4800 MHz, a one terabyte PCI Gen 4 SSD, Wi-Fi 6E, Intel Iris integrated graphics when you're not using the GPU, and then of course the big boy, the Nvidia RTX 4080 laptop GPU. And then of course we have that display, the 1080p 7 17 inch 360 hertz whopper on this thing. I think for gaming 1080p probably is going to be the right way for most people. I mean there are higher end Aorus laptops you can get that have a 1440p panel and if you are rocking like a 4090 then I guess that does make sense. But the thing is personally speaking I don't think 1440p is necessary on a gaming laptop unless you are going to be doing work as well because while the image quality will look better the screen size isn't really big enough that you can sort of 
It's not that you can't see the detail, it's just when you're playing a game, especially anything that's fast moving, you can't really appreciate it. So having that 360 hertz refresh rate in certain titles like Valorant, maybe your CS2, is actually going to be a lot more useful. But obviously it is going to depend what you want to play. If you're going to be playing something like Civilization, then sure, 1440p might be better. But I think for most people, this is probably the option you'd want to go with. But enough talk, let's get some games installed on this and jump right in. I want our first title to be one that will take full advantage of our display, which is why we're going for some Valorant. Of course, we're going to need a mouse and a PC-centric mouse mat. Link is located down below. I mean, surely this will be able to get 360 FPS, right? Surely. But we can only believe it when we see it. I am genuinely excited. Let's have a quick look in the options menu just to make sure everything is set how we want it. I'll go for 2 times MSAO, but 16 on the filtering, everything else is set to high. So let us go, and there you go. You can see it, top left-hand corner of your screen, we are hitting 360 FPS. We're actually getting more than that. We're around about 400, 440 odd, which is very, very impressive. But as long as you're able to fully saturate this display, obviously that doesn't matter. And in a game like Valorant, that is just so purely based on skill, it makes such a huge difference. That's not to say that it's necessarily gonna turn you into a fantastic game Gamer overnight. I mean, practice absolutely makes perfect. But if you're seriously going to be playing competitive games and you want something that is portable, then clearly this is such an amazing option. I mean, I do want to say again that this is a 1080p display, yet on a screen like this, like, I, I can't really notice a difference anyway, to be honest. I'm certainly not looking at this and thinking I want more resolution. And in fact, if this was 1440p, 120 or 165 hertz, I guarantee you would be able to notice a difference when it comes to the overall fluidity and the reaction time that you're gonna get from this display. It's marvelous. But let's press on to game numero number two, some Halo Infinite. Sticking with that multiplayer, baby. And here we go. This is running at the high preset. And as you can see, it is a little bit more of a demanding title. You can sort of customize this as you want to get the best possible frame rate. But here we're getting anywhere really between about 165 and about 220 frames a second. So it depends when and where you are in the game, I suppose. But regardless, this is still going to give you a pretty flawless multiplayer experience. I mean, don't forget that on consoles, you're pretty much capped at 120, but most gamers are going to be playing at about 60 frames a second. So to be able to do this on a gaming laptop that is entirely portable, that is very thin and light and that you can take with you from place to place is ridiculously impressive. The pairing between the CPU and the GPU is also working quite nicely here. We're getting some bottlenecking in some scenes, but it tends to sort of flip-flop really between the graphics card and the CPU. So if there was an i9 option, I would go for that for the absolute best results. But this six core, or at least six performance core, 14 total core laptop is probably hitting that sort of sweet spot really between price and performance. Just out of interest, what happens if we turn this down to medium, keeping the textures at ultra? And in terms of the frame rate, we do now see a very slight increase of probably about 15 to 20. So we're not quite getting a constant 200, but it is much, much closer. But let's move on to some even more demanding titles. Returnal, you're up. Let's have a quick look at our settings. We've got this running at 1080p, DLSS balanced, and literally everything is turned up to epic, including the ray tracing, which is gonna sort of stress this system, well, I guess, to the max, but let's see how well it copes. Not too shabby, actually. That, that is impressive. Around about 105 frames a second. Bear in mind, we've got ray tracing set to epic. I, I, I admit, I was probably expecting about 60 or so, so that is a lot higher than I would have expected. I mean, you think this was actually originally a PlayStation 5 game, and you were definitely not getting that frame rate on the PlayStation 5. That is very, very impressive. This game is hard, though. I'd like to point out, I mean, you look at all of the particle effects and things that are going on here. I'm amazed that the game engine can actually keep up with it. It is a feat of engineering if I've ever seen one. And again, the fact that this can actually run on a gaming laptop like this with everything set to max, I think it's remarkable. It is a testament to the hardware. Interestingly, this is another title where we are getting a small amount of CPU bottlenecking, which means that some of that horsepower is left on the table. And the way that you can usually sort of negate this is just by running the game at a higher resolution. So you can either turn DLSS off or do what we've done here, which is to turn it down to quality. And exchange, you'll see you're getting a little bit more sharpness, but not actually the cost of losing any frame rate as you've got more available on tap. And you're probably also wondering about thermals and acoustics. And spoiler alert, this is a very high-end gaming laptop, so it is not going to be as quiet as an Ultrabook. Again, almost slightly surprisingly to me, it is very impressive that the noise levels of this really aren't too bad at all. 
I mean, bear in mind this is pretty much running flat out. You've got pretty much all of the tensor cores, all of the ray tracing, everything going on at once. And if you have any sort of headphones on, you'd be able to, well, you won't be able to hear it at all. But even if you want to use the speakers that actually come built into this, I don't think it's going to have to fight too hard to sort of get over the top of them. Like, don't get me wrong, like this does make noise. This is not me trying to undersell the noise levels of this. But I think compared again to not only laptops from the previous generation, but the generation before that and the generation before that, they seem to be getting quieter and quieter. Well, the thermals at around about 70, 75 degrees on both the CPU and the GPU also continue to come down. So it is very impressive. But pressing swiftly on to the most demanding title we have on our test, some Hogwarts Legacy. And as you can see, we're getting around about 90 to 110 frames a second depending on where and when you are in the game. This is running at the ultra preset but frame generation is currently disabled. We're going to turn this on now because we are also getting a little bit of CPU bottlenecking. Let's go back into the options and find frame generation. Here it is, we'll turn this on and you should. Now notice that our frame rate will increase and indeed it has. We're actually using more of the GPU as well. You can see that utilization is about 80 to 90 percent now. And in terms of our frame rate, we're getting about 150 to 180 frames a second. That is, that is a massive difference, actually. That, that really is. Again, I'm not sure I was expecting that high. That is pretty impressive. In terms of the latency as well, we're getting about 40 milliseconds or so, which for a single player title with more than anyone needs, it's really not going to be a concern whatsoever. Granted, Hogwarts Legacy is one of those titles that has quite a lot of variance in the FPS, but because this is a laptop that comes with NVIDIA G-Sync, this will help to smooth out the stutter and tearing that you might otherwise get. But there you go, look, at the moment, 180 to 240 frames a second, but then back down to 130. This game is weird. And so then, there we are, the Aorus 17H. I think there is a lot on offer here, and I'm genuinely really impressed with the fact that this is just so thin and light for a gaming laptop that packs an 80 series GPU. I think the improvements that have been made are, are pretty ridiculous, let alone the fact that we actually have a 360 hertz display, and in Valorant, we can actually achieve that. I think that in itself is a massive achievement. I think Gigabyte have hit a really nice price point with this as well, because it is definitely a high-end machine, but we're not into that 4090 sort of three to four thousand pound mark that is just not really accessible by many at all. Whereas this for just over two thousand pounds if you get it at the RRP, I would say is actually very reasonable for what you're getting. You're getting a nice sturdy laptop that's going to last you for years to come and has pretty much all of the features really that you'd need. The only downsides I'd say are obviously the fact that it is a gaming laptop so you can usually find slightly better value if you want for a Aorus graphics card in an equivalent PC but obviously then you don't have any portability whatsoever and if you can can get an i9 version of this, I think it's going to give you a little bit more CPU horsepower that if you are going to be playing particularly single player ray trace titles will give you a little bit more performance. But if you are going for games like Apex Legends and Valorant, but it's worth factoring in that slight upgrade if you need a little bit extra CPU horsepower. What do you make of the Aura 17? Is this a laptop that sort of tickles your fancy or is there something else out there that you think is a little bit more tempting? I'd absolutely love to hear your thoughts on this, so let me know down in the comment section below. A massive thank you once again for Gigabyte for supplying this, for sponsoring this video, and for you guys for watching. Smash the like button if you've enjoyed this, get yourself subscribed, and I'll leave a link to this down below if you do want to check out current pricing. Thank you so much for watching, I'll catch you in the next one.